Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Your Little Castle show. In studio here with, we have, uh, some people will find this a definitely interesting show because where do things go? Sometimes in life, you just want things to flush away, go away, right? <laughs> they need to go down the drain. And what we're talking about in this case is actually how it is true that you have a drainage system in just about every house in America, right? And at times, the drains get clogged or damaged. And so if you have a house, your little castle, you need to have a drain that is functional because that we talked about that a little bit. We had our pregame prep here. And it is so true that while there's, there's a lot that might impact the purchase of a house, right? When somebody's drain isn't working, that could be a very expensive repair. So we're going to share with you a lot of expertise here from A and J Drain and Sherry and Marty. Welcome to the show, you guys. Welcome. <laughs> All right. So it is an interesting topic and it's one of those things i can imagine there's a lot of people out there that might be do-it-yourselfers right for just about everything except for that drainage problem right because that's a little bit something that people they don't necessarily want to deal with that right. and even so um they i mean you could really get into where you're causing big problems for a house if you mess up the drain because you got the sewage and then all the other smell everything that goes in you can tell me all the problems that people run into obviously but uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Before we do, let's do a quick uh, review of our exciting people we have that sponsor our show here and take a look on the wall because you can see Carroll House Furniture because you like nice things in your little castle. Put that up on the screen. <laughs> and then, of course, we love also our support we get from USA Mortgage. A lot of exciting stuff we're doing there because... Uh, you can't buy a house very often these days, but not a whole lot of people pay cash for a house, right? And so that mortgage, and you want to get a company that's been established that does that. I have my mortgage license, full disclosure. You'll see all the disclaimers as part of our show here as we continue, but shout out to those guys. With that, we're going to jump right over into it. And so there we have your website on wall number one and on wall over here on wall number two. Here we got a great picture of you guys together. And uh, with that, we'll, this, is, this is off Sherry's page. I'm going to go back a couple. And we're going to go, there you are. There is the A&J Drain Services Facebook page. They call it a fan page. So you must be legit because you got a website and a Facebook page, right? Besides that, they've got a lot of great reviews. But let's dive into it a little bit. Tell me, I realize now, you, you guys, and we were discussing this, you've been married as part of this business. And this business, you've been, how many years have you guys been in business now? Uh, since 2006. It'll be so, 17 years in October. 17 years. years. On your own. On your own. Okay. And so, I mean, it's just exciting, especially when you have a good partner, somebody you had me married to, and then you can run this thing. If you got a good relationship, you can make for a great business. It sounds like you guys have managed to, to make that happen. That's pretty exciting. Sherry, tell me, why did you guys decide to get into this business? Well, um, Marty originally worked for his brother um, selling sewer and drain equipment. He ended up um, downsizing a little bit, and Marty's like, well, what are we going to do? And um, he decided, I'm going to open my own sewer and drain cleaning business. So he jumped on board. And and, and the rest is history, as they say. Yeah. Because, <laughs> and, and there's always something that leads up to it. And it's, it's usually not somebody just wakes up and rolls over and goes, today this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. That's where we want to get a little bit of the background so you can share with people. Why is it your passion? How did you get in this? But it started with some expertise in the industry yeah. and saying, hey, we can take this service and bring it to people because it is a vital. It's the one I, I, I'm trying to find the right way to say it. It's the one that most people don't probably go, that will be the dream job because I want to get down there and, and deal with that kind of thing. But if, if you get into it, and why did you end up with this? Because there was a, a relation to the equipment and then you become interested and now you can see how you can help people. And there you go. And now you've been doing it for 17 years. Well, Marty, tell me what you love about it and why, why you've been doing this for so long. I just like to uh, solve problems sometimes that other companies couldn't solve, that we go in we solve them. And uh, show people that um, what actually is going on with their pipes, whether they be broken or someone tells them they want it to be, uh, it needs to be replaced when it don't, it just needs to be cleaned right so we like to try to take care of people well I, I can speak to that because I've and, and I have a wonderful crew of a, a number of HVAC guys that I've been through here and currently in a situation for myself where we've got a, a house that needs some HVAC and it was interesting because it seems like the, the strategy in that industry had been in the past because I'd experienced it myself 
well, here's this expensive thing, and you just, just do what we say. And this guy sold me something at an old house I had, and it wasn't even what I needed. And I found out I char I've got charged three times what I should have paid. Boy, how much, that's the one that you can kind of observe, you can dig in, you can look at your vents, you can look at the stuff. But if you're talking about a drain, uh, there's a lot of people that could be like, yeah, I'm not even going to question what you're talking about. But you've got a unique strategy, resource, technology you use that lets you literally run a camera down there to show them what's going on. And yeah. locate where the problem is. Instead of digging up the whole problem, you just locate that spot where it can be dug up and repaired. Very cool. That's 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 That to me is something that you're going a little bit above and beyond. That's what we like to help people understand. The companies that are doing these things are the ones that are taking the time necessary to show how this gets done the right way. And I could, this is why I had seen technology like this before. I didn't know anybody actually implemented it, but it's obviously necessary for what you guys do in given today's environment. Otherwise you just kind of, the old sewer snake thing they would send down there, you kind of poke around, we think it's clear. Yeah. Not the case now, you can prove that. Yeah. Very important. Well, tell me, what is, what is a personal hobby that, that you think led you to where you just love helping people with, you know, keeping this house in order and, and what it is that got you here? Uh, just being, when I started out, it was um, working around the clock like most people that start their business out. They got to pay the bills. So, 2 o'clock in the morning, a lady's getting ready to fly out of town and she needed uh, her line open because she's worried it's going to keep backing up while they're gone out of the country. So, I took care of her on that and just seeing people over the years that started out in the beginning, they're just, it's neat to... Uh, meet with people like that and them call us back and remind me of the time I was out there in the pouring down rain and doing it at two o'clock in the morning. Well, that's that's one of these emergency type situations where you're literally like, I mean, because wow, you think about it, I hadn't thought of that scenario, but um, when you're you're literally on it, getting ready to get on a plane yep. to head out of town and you've got a sewage problem, you can't put that off, right? right. That needs to be addressed now, or as my dad was a quick, fast and in a hurry. <laughs> and that's important and you otherwise you end up with, tell me what are some of the other big problems that come about when somebody gets into this kind of an issue and they're going oh it's just sewer stuff underneath my house it'll go away I mean what are they really putting at risk there um, broken lines uh, lines most people's houses are clay pipes so they're four to five foot sections they'll get leaks underneath them, shift the pipe, the pipe will end up falling in because there's no support underneath the pipes no more. So you get broken pipes and that's where you get damage to your house too from uh, the pipes leaking and creating a big void. Like the one you just saw on TV this morning down on St. Louis somewhere. I can't remember where it's at. Yeah, we've had a couple of the old pipes breaking in some of the older cities where they've got you know, St. Louis and St. Charles. They're older, they've been around 100, 150, 200 years now almost. And they had these old uh, cobblestone roads, and underneath, I, was, I, I did a live shoot. I have uh, one of my business partners says, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars to go down and cover this thing, because that was part of our agreement, because I was the on the, in the field reporter. And I would go down and just shoot this video, and you could just see where this water just kind of seeped in all over, because the old style, what were they using? And is it just brick, and they sealed it with something, and now it's old, and, and it cracks, and then now you've got big problems. And that's relative to the houses we've got. Yeah. And those ages too, is yep. that right? Okay. And and that's why we're seeing some. So it's a matter of the, the, the age of this has a lot to do with some of the damage. Age or ground movement, anything like that. What causes ground movement? Like the earthquake that hit in Kentucky that <laughs> shattered people's bricks off their houses and everything here. Um, it moves the ground and next thing you know, the pipes shift or snap off and then you got to leak. And then you're going to have big problems. What are some of the what are some of the big problems that that, that occur? Because I'm trying to process this, and I'm, I, sometimes I just need a little help. But when the when that sewer, because to me it's like the water goes out and it's gone, but it backs up and it causes it to come up inside the house. Right. And then you get okay. I can imagine because then you've got once the water gets get even on the lower level at the bottom, it starts seeping up into the walls and other. Oh yeah. Made out of uh, your wallboard, et cetera, and now you get, you get mold and all kinds of problems. Right. That's what you end up with. Sherry, tell me a little bit about some of these. You've dealt with this, obviously, helping your husband do all this stuff. What's some of the craziest stuff you've seen? Some of the people, something that people well, don't realize. Well, sometimes, like when MSD line can't take all the water and they back up into their water, backs up into um, the people's houses, 
and they can't control it. You know, a lot of times they call and I'm like, well, are you running anything? And they're like, no. I go, well, all this heavy water, the pipes aren't, can't c keep up with it. So um, then all it's just coming in their house and they can't do anything about it. That, that can be big problems, is that right? Yes. Tell me a little bit more about wh how you deal with that, Marty. Uh, a lot of people in areas that tend to flood, um, not because of, you know, a stream or a river or anything like that, but because pipes can't handle the rains that we're getting now. Before you get 1.74 inches of rain in a 24-hour period, you know, the pipes can basically handle that. But when you're talking three to four inches of rain within six hours, the pipes ain't meant to handle that. So the only thing you really do is get backflow preventers put in where that'll keep the water from coming back into your uh, basement and stuff like that on heavy rains. Okay, so a lot of this has to do with heavy rain, just is more than the capacity that these right. pipes have. And that makes some sense to me. I had had a time at one of the houses uh, that I was part of, give all the details of that and bore people, but literally it was on a slant. So the water just ran past it, but it ran so heavily one time, it backed up the sump pump, right? Is that part of the sewage drainage system? Right. And just for water that goes out, but it came so fast that it still didn't even have, they didn't have a pump at this facility. So, because it was on a hill and would go down, but it rained so much. And is it true that you're saying we're getting more higher, higher levels, more rain at one time than what these things can actually hang? Oh, handle? definitely. And that's why MSD, a, you know, is doing their whole infrastructure and making bigger pipes going through, diverting water and everything. They're spending a lot of money doing a great job trying to, take care of those problems okay well this this is a, a larger problem than i than most people may realize and uh, the msd metro what's that stand for Met, sewer metro sewer, metro sewer district. district right okay yeah uh wow because then you get into much worse stuff you could actually as i think about this because a lot of disease can be transferred from water that's obviously uh, you know contaminated with um parasites, bugs, germs, all the stuff that we shouldn't be walking around in, even on the bottom of our feet and then transfer to the house and all that right. stuff. These are things that can cause some real problems. This is why realtors want to get that checked before they sell a house or buy a house, especially the buyer, I would say. Correct. You definitely, before you buy any house, doesn't matter if it's a brand new house um, that somebody's only lived in for two years. Sometimes they put Schedule 35 pipe in there and it's a thinner pipe, so the pressure of the ground could collapse that pipe. That's what you call ovaling, where you'll see the pipes squish down. Um, disconnection of pipes when they're doing builds on it. There's multiple things. Always get a camera run so you're not stuck with that build down the road. Let's show everybody what we're talking about there. So if you heard the word he mentioned, it's camera. Get a camera run. Is that the, yep. the jargon for the yep. industry? Video inspection or camera. And, and so technically that's a video inspection. So let's look up here on the wall, everybody. Take a look on the far wall. I'll put that up for everybody to see. And uh, we're going to switch over. There's your Facebook page. But we already have set this video. So it might look like you're looking at a close-up shot of somebody's leg or something there. I'm not sure <laughs> what people may think that is. But check this video out, everybody. This is a little bit surprising. This one's not dirty, per se. And that's we, we picked the video because there are some videos, I'm sure, where you've got all kinds of stuff that go oh, through yeah. these pipes. But... Uh, Let's take a look here at this video because here you can see this is a problem. This makes sense with somebody who has a brand new house mm -hmm. because they might have somebody come through and say, we need to get some new cable. And so I'll take, I want people to get a full shot that that is where somebody came in to install a new cable. Either cable or fiber optics and they bored through the sewer. So they are having a problem with their sewer backing up, couldn't figure out why. And uh, we went in there and got the line to drain down and got the camera in there to show them why uh, they kept getting backed up because toilet paper would catch on where that bore went through. And so then we located it so it could be repaired. And that's another interesting you guys talked to me about because I thought pipes were pretty much designed with a slick surface so that everything went through them, but not the case. There are a couple of things, we won't name any brand names, but talk about the generic and it's quilted is it quilted quilted to toilet paper quilted to sherry tell everybody what quilted <laughs> well it doesn't break down 
Um, so it'll stay in your line, it'll clump in your line, it can build a wall. Um, it, the air coming through can just dry it up and it can block your line. And I'm one of those that gets real technical, so excuse me, but the, tech, the quilted is that little design. It looks like it's like, kind of like a quilt, right? <laughs> it's a neat design for toilet paper if that's important to you. But because of that design, it causes it to cling more to the plumbing. It's the plies, it's the, the thickness of it. Oh, so a quilted meaning that it also then there's multiple like, layers yeah. too. Right. Right. I've seen the quilted, it's got the little designs yeah. on it. Yeah. That's not the issue really. Okay, right. I'm glad thickness. I asked the question. Yep. But it's the fact that there is a multiple, you know, three, two ply, three ply yeah. paper and one peels off and it just clots, if you will, and clogs up a Drink. It's like when you're a kid and you went into the bathroom and you took the toilet paper, wetted it down, threw it up on the ceiling, you know, and stuck there in a big wad. <laughs> Marty, yeah. I never did that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same principle because when it goes down the line, when you flush once, you got a gallon or 1.2 gallon flush and it'll take it so far and that toilet paper will stop. It don't go all the way out. So then the next person comes and it creates a dam then the air from the main comes back and dries that toilet paper up and now you got to block it. The toilet paper blockage, everybody, that's something you do not want to have. But I guess this happens very commonly. All the time. And people are going, well, we don't know. We didn't flush anything down there. I didn't take a plant soil thing and dump it in the toilet or anything. It was literally somebody just decided it'd be fun or they needed more toilet paper <laughs> than the average person normally needs. And then Next thing you've got a problem. Also, you, Sherry, you mentioned there's another cause that often have, was caused by this. What kind of wipes did you talk about? Well, any kind of wipes, baby wipes, personal wipes, cleaning wipes, those don't break down. And um, of course, feminine products, all those things you just don't want to flush. Okay, put them in the trash can and yes. then go in to, to some other, and you've got the trash compactor or whatever it is, but even <laughs> put them in a bag. My, I'll never forget, my dad would tell me, Carter, that's something that you don't put down the drain, even if you have a, uh, what, what's the, the drain a grinder pump. yeah pump. Grinder pump. And, right and and you can put it down there it'll grind up into pieces whatever that might help a little bit but it will cause it's because if, if it's something that should be thrown into a trash can just put a trash can put it in a bag and then take it out to the outside trash yeah right? but that's going to save you a lot of hassle and uh uh keep you from having to deal with the, the problems that you guys obviously have seen cause i mean it, doing this for 17 years i guess you guys have seen it all what, what's now, the, you see new stuff every day New problems. New problem. What are some of the newest problems that people have that you've seen? Just plumbing that was incorrect. You know, a lot of times you'll get like a house and they'll have a bathroom and then 10 feet away they'll have another bathroom and then they'll put a four-way, which means the center pipe will go out the roof for your vent. The other one drops down to your basement and goes out. And then the two toilets that come across, the toilet paper will catch on that lip. The other person flushes, it catches on the other lip. Now you created a dam and they're very hard to get open. You got to really finagle them to get them open. You've got to have some expertise for that, I would assume. For yeah, sure. it takes time. It takes time. Okay, now we're getting into some, I, I we got a little more in depth with some of the problems there. I was just interested and curious because I have dealt with some, a couple drain issues in my life. Uh, girlfriend I had been dating for a long time, had a house, and uh, I'll never forget crawling around and it did not smell pleasant and I had to fish this sewer thing down and we kind of got, what's the problem when somebody does it themselves and they get what they think they've solved the problem maybe, right? But the truth is they haven't fixed the problem at all because there's still remnants of it. They didn't blow out the whole blockage. What, what kind of problems do you run into? Yeah, or they'll use the wrong size cable they'll get it stuck in the line and then call us to try to get it out or it'll if you use the wrong size cable they actually double back in the line and create a knot where the cable is knotted in the pipe and you won't get it back you got to dig it up okay so there you go ladies for all of you do-it-yourselfers be, be wary I, I can go buy a sewer snake they call that right it's just a long piece of metal with a kind of a knob looking metal thing on the end right cutters on the end and and, and it will function in some cases, but you could be causing yourself a whole lot more problems by doing Oh, that. definitely. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the, uh, I'm going to take a look at some of the pictures that we had, and we're going to jump over to your guys' photos on your page. I think that's the easiest place for people to see those. And then I want to talk about your guys' reviews. So we have some cute um, posts from some of your past uh, entertaining posts, but I want to share with people a couple of these. Tell me what people are looking at here. On, on I'm going to put this on the, on the wall for everybody to look here. 
Okay, you see that picture up there in front of us? Tell me what this is. That's a lot of roots. Um, they're actually like wire roots. They're stranded, so it just grows in a wide. They're very hard to cut out. You got to really work them to get them out. It's not like uh, other roots that you can go in and cut. Them are actually stretch and be like a curtain root. So they'll hang from the top of the pipe. You run your cutter through there, it'll still hang there, and you're bypassing it. So you got to go in with an expandable blade or a jetter and actually uh, scrape the wall of the pipe to get those out. That doesn't sound like that's easy to do. Well, it takes time. <laughs> you, have to, you, you should have some expertise if you're going to get into that. All right, let's switch back over here. I want to share with everybody. We've got another few interesting pictures here. This is this looks like cables, but this is actually roots. these are roots again. Yeah. So watch out for your trees that are growing close to the house. These aren't big roots, but by the time you've got a bunch of these that have stumbled themselves inside a pipe, now you've got a problem. Yes, and that'll collect the toilet paper, wipes, um, gotcha. anything like people put down the drains. Okay, similar problem. Here we have a, a long string of things that look like they, now is that, the, is that the sewer snake that went down the middle of that, but that's what it pulled out? Correct, and the roots just wadded up on the cable itself. Interesting. Wow, there's just a lot to this that uh, a lot of people don't. And you get. can see how thick that root is, and look at, you know, its thumb size, and it's bigger than your thumb. Yeah. So that's a traveler root that'll go in uh, the joint. Usually, it's because the pipe shifted or to grow go in there. People's not having any problems. It'll stay on top of the pipe, and it'll dip little bitty roots down into the water and get the water it needs. But next thing you know. It cracks your pipe or breaks your pipe, and then you got a problem. Then you got a problem. All right, we got a couple more here. This one looks interesting. This is literally, I mean, it's just like somebody just piled up a bunch of their trash yeah. and, and, and tried to flush it, I guess. What's going on here? Is this a similar issue where you've got wire roots? Yep. Wire roots. Yeah, they're just the size of a wire and they're very hard to cut out. Okay, but it's not actual wire that somebody no. actually put down. It's a Correct. root that looks like a wire. Interesting. Okay, Sherry, you've you've dealt with this for a long time. Is this is is this a bigger problem? Than a lot of people realize. I mean, it's to me, it's just like this is going on a lot more readily because I see what the cause is here. Right. Well, this especially if you have clay pipe, this um, they get put together in sections, so that's where the roots come grow through, or the sections grow through the joints. Yeah, the joints. Okay, <laughs> and so you're literally having stuff grow through the joints. And that, is that something that then will swing over? It can go from one pipe to another and, oh, and they cross pipes because these things are just, they're designed to get to water. Most of them are just yeah. looking for their source of water. That's what plants need, right? Yeah. And and they just will weave through everything to get to wherever. Usually if you have clay pipe, we say to maintain a, your sewer line once a year and get it cabled. Okay. To keep them under control. Interesting. All right. Well, let's take another jump over here because I've got great information I want to share with everybody because you guys have done such a good job. Um, there's many people that do get reviews. These days, reviews have become very important. So up on the wall, I'm going to put your reviews. And here you go. 76 reviews you've got. And that's pretty a, a good amount for small business as I, my analysis as we look at through all these. And a 4.6, right? That means you're doing a good job because if you didn't, if you had like a three point something, then people start to question. You're almost a five. If you had a five, then I'd be like, well, that's interesting that you get a five. There's one from somebody that whatever, and I'm sure you probably addressed that. But all the other, I mean, look at these five after five after five after five. You've done a good job. You've built a great re reputation. Um, let me just read one off here. Exceptional service. Booking was super easy. Employees were knowledgeable in the inspection of my downspouts thorough. I'm glad. Uh, able to hire A and J drain service to perform this assessment with the report they provided. I am, let me expand that, um, empowered with the information I need to pr prioritize corrective actions required to address systems root causes of water coming into my basements. Five stars. They talked about a lot there. Tell me about some of the issues they're addressing there because you're helping people to also diagnose big problems and what what was going on in this particular case if you recall or what are, what are we looking at it sounds like the one where they had water coming into their basement when it rained a lot so their downspouts going down under under the ground at the sides of the house 
they were clogged up, so the water was backing up the downspouts, running through the crack between the sidewalk and the wall of the house, and then having water come into their basement. Interesting. All right, now we're talking about where you're really making a difference. That's where I have to break out the cardinal cowboy hat. And this is stuff that affects uh, the livelihood of a family with their houses under water. People can't work. People can't sleep. Do they have to evacuate some people from their houses sometimes? Because sometimes if it over, and it can really cause big problems that way too. Wow, incredible information here for a lot. It's something like I said. This is the dirty jobs that people don't like to talk about, but it's something that has got to be addressed. And like I said, if I hadn't been there a little bit myself and seen some of this myself, I may be just kind of like, this is one of those things that I could ignore. I don't even need to until there's a problem. And then, but if this is somebody who's seen some of this a little bit, this causes, and that's why real estate agents get very. Uh, uh, addressed to this because they want to make sure this doesn't turn into a 1520. What's the most expensive repair you've seen that somebody's had to have done? Uh, it, you could go crazy with it just because um, I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the cost of a repair. Um, well, you know, normal, it, it could be, you know, it could be a $2,500 or $3,500 repair up to you know, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar repair it depends on how bad it is. Thirty thousand dollars to get this kind of stuff done, and that is because you're going to have to. Many times they're going to have to uproot and, and break into. Do they have to dis disrupt the foundation to crack no, into you, it? Something you break the floor up. Yeah, you have to your literally... pipes are underneath the floor, so they break the floor up. Usually they'll go about twelve inches wide, uh, depending on how deep it is. They'll go about 12 inches wide and trail the pipe. We come in and locate it so they know exactly where the pipes go, and then the plumber comes in and breaks the floor up and replaces the pipe for it. But if you got an older home, your cast iron has a shelf life of 50 to 75 years, so you're going to be replacing your cast iron underneath your floor sooner or later, and hopefully you didn't just redo your whole basement and didn't do that part of it if you're contractor didn't have the line checked first because you will replace it i did not realize that. what's the extent of what somebody can expect from a modern house how long will that plumbing last well uh if it's pvc you're not going to be breaking it up um you're just going to be cleaning the lines out unless they use thin wall pipe schedule 35 and then then you get the squishiness and toilet paper hangs up and the oval pipe and then you got problems Okay, everybody, this is a lot to absorb here because there's a lot that obviously can go wrong. This is the end of our half hour segment. Um, great information here. Thank you, AJ. I think we, we might decide if we're going to do another segment here with you guys because it's really good information you're sharing with everybody. And this is critical. Stay tuned for more, everybody. This is the Your Little Castle Show. We'll be back for more.